<laughs> thank, th thank you very much. Uh, and many thanks to the organizers for uh, inviting me. It's a uh, pleasure to be here in Skopje. Much of the discussion to date at the Western Balkan Summit has focused quite naturally on the challenges and opportunities faced by the Western Balkans themselves and their relationship and future with the European Union. This is entirely fitting, especially given the Western Balkans EU summit uh, last week. Clearly, as the countries of the Western Balkans succeed in adopting the required legislation and implementing these, those rules, it will be in the interests of all the Balkans, Europe, and the United States for them to have the stability and security of being EU members. Indeed, encouraging strong and steady movement in that direction by the countries of the Western Balkans and working with Europe to support them is one of the most important transatlantic tasks for the Biden administration. But I want to look around a little bit more broadly. Today we face a, a fragile global environment, strategically, economically, environmentally, and certainly in terms of, of health and safety of our citizens. We must deal with the continued rise of authoritarian powers, the ever-increasing impacts of climate change with the effects of COVID-19 and future possible pandemics, and the fallout of Western withdrawal from Afghanistan, among other serious issues. In addition, the United States and Russia and China are engaged in a, a, a sort of new great power competition, and nowhere is this more evident uh, than in the Western Balkans, which has become a crucial nexus of major power involvement and where both Russia and China are constantly uh, seeking to increase their own engagement. China's made uh, comprehensive efforts to establish itself in key economic areas and present itself as an essential actor, though its economic footprint is, uh, in the region is still comparatively shallow, it has grown significantly over a, a short uh, period of time. Russia, of course, uh, has uh, strong historical socio-cultural ties uh, with the region. Uh, as the US and the European Union think about uh, our competition with these authoritarian regimes, we must make sure that our economies are resilient. The US and the EU have just launched a new trade and technology council among its primary ambitions are to make sure both of our regions enjoy resilient and sustainable supply uh, chains. And just in our own news today, we see that uh, our President Biden focused uh, very intensely uh, on that uh, issue uh, yesterday. And that we protect our populations by coordinating our investment screening, artificial intelligence, and export controls on trade and dual use items. The Western Balkans themselves need to join us in this endeavor by looking to reinforce the resilience of their own infrastructure. At the conclusion of the recent EU Western Balkans summit in Slovenia, the EU agreed on a 30 billion euro uh, economic and investment plan for the region. They pledged to boost COVID-19 vaccination rates, a path towards lowering roaming costs uh, and other commitments. How can these commitments be used to build resilience, whether in the population or in civil society and governing structures or in digital and physical infrastructure? As the countries of the Western Balkans think about how to make themselves more secure, there should be no doubt about the commitment of the United States administration to that task. Uh, on June 8th, President Biden issued an executive order on, quote, blocking property and suspending entry into the United States of certain persons contributing to uh, the destabilizing situation in the Western Balkans, end of quote. In addition, the administration has already indicated its commitment to supporting countries of the Western Balkans in their quest for European integration. The U.S. State Department released a statement in April affirming the administration's desire to help the nations deepen, quote, I'm quoting here again, deepen their own regional economic partnerships, achieve their climate goals, 
counter Russia's energy coercion through diversification and clean energy development and combat corruption and organized crime, end of quote. Washington has worked with Serbia and Kosovo to encourage them to uh, re-engage in the process of uh, full normalization. These kinds of demonstrations of support and interest from the West are important, but the engagement cannot be piecemeal as the region faces so many challenges, both internal and external. For both the United States and the EU, the Western Balkans are a uh, strategically important area. They need to be engaged and they need to help the countries of the Balkans move forward to become solid members of the Western Club of Democracy. But aside from the challenges facing the Western Balkans within their own borders, they, al they also lie at a strategic crossroads and thus are vulnerable to the travails of those in the neighboring region. We saw this dramatically in 2015 and 16 as close to 800,000 Syrian refugees and other migrants walked across the region in their effort to reach the European Union, those days uh, could return. Instability remains in nearby regions from Afghanistan all the way across the Middle East and North Africa. Are the Balkan governments prepared and are we prepared to assist them? The Western Balkans face other challenges in this fragile environment the region is touched by essentially all of the major issues of the day. Along with migration, there is the potential for reborn conflict in the Middle East, tension in uh, the Eastern Mediterranean, high energy prices, to name a few. Over the past few years, we've seen increasingly positive re relationships growing between several Eastern Mediterranean states, including Cyprus, Israel, and of course, Greece. Overlapping energy, economic, and sometimes political interests have brought these countries together. This can serve as a model for cooperation for the Western Balkans, where much more can be achieved together than by going it alone. Conversely, other actors in the Eastern Mediterranean with sometimes diverging national interests, particularly Turkey, have become more assertive in pursuing their interests. Discoveries of natural gas fields have brought hopes of energy diversification and economic windfall, though at times they have reignited disagreements over maritime boundaries and the Cyprus issue. And of course, several countries in the region remain hotbeds of insecurity and instability from Syria to Lebanon to Libya. Nevertheless, the Eastern Mediterranean countries and the Western Balkan countries being in close proximity not only to each other, but to the same external regional powers, share some of the same interests, including in terms of security, increased cooperation between the two regions can only be a good thing. The Western Balkans is and will remain a uh, strategically important part of the world and one which can and should play a major role in enhancing cooperation and peace in a fragile and unpredictable global environment. The more stable and secure the Balkans are, the more they will provide resilience, not only for themselves, but for the Western world in general. And thank you very much.